before we get to the word, I need to hear you say it, all right? Before we can even crack open our Bibles, I need to, I, I got to see if y'all really understand where I'm coming from, all right? All right? Depending on how y'all do this, it, it depends what we're going to do tonight, all right? I got one question for you. Who's the people? We are the people. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, give God some glory. All right, and you could, hallelujah, what's that? Let's bring it. Let's bring it, hallelujah. Appreciate you, Pastor Butler. If you could take your Bibles and turn with them to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 7, hallelujah, we're going to get cranked up. Glory to God, I'm so happy to be here with y'all, hallelujah. And, um, beautiful woman, I keep asking for pointers and hints, that's my lovely wife, Chantel, First Lady Chantel. Come on, give God some glory. God and uh, we have uh, been married going on 18 years. Three kids, amen. Hallelujah. And uh, she don't look like she's been married 18 years, amen. People stop and say, that's your daughter, amen. So, <laughs> hallelujah. But I'm going to put some just for a minute in that beard. <laughs> All right. So let's look at Acts chapter 7. And I uh, want to just pay particular attention to verses uh, 6 and 7 tonight. And then tomorrow night, depending on where we stop, we'll just kind of continue on. Always good to see you, Brother Hall. Good, Ms. Zelda. Amen. Traveling. Bless y'all. Amen. Starting to look very familiar. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. The Bible says in verse 6, And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil. How long? 400 years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. Yeah. We've been kind of going through the book of Acts, amen, looking at Stephen's defense, but more important, amen, is what Stephen is saying. And so we've been just talking about, amen, Stephen's uh, testimony in relation to God's conversation with Abraham. And if you remember, amen, God told Abraham, number one, that your descendants are going to be in a strange land. And of course, this related to uh, uh, the first Egyptian captivity, but also, amen, at the school of the Hebrews, we've taught you, amen, that there would not only be a first Egyptian captivity, but that there would also be a second one. And that the people of God, the people of Yah, would not only be strangers in a foreign land one time, but twice. Amen. When the Bible says a strange land, it talks about a land that's not their home. It talks about a land that could even be hostile towards them. Amen. Uh, the Bible says that they would not only be in a strange land, but that they would be in bondage. And once again, in the first Egyptian captivity, we were put in slavery. And so it is in the second Egyptian captivity. And we talked about the transatlantic slave trade, the cruel, amen, bondage of American slavery. And so we saw that it also applied to our current situation. We next enumerated how both in Egypt and in our current situation in America and abroad across the nations, we have been in treated evil. Whether it's the police brutality, whether it's the environmental injustice, the list goes on and on, and we've discussed those things, amen. And I just want to interject that the fact that we are so evilly entreated, amen, for, for little or no reason at all, amen, is just testimony to who we are. Anybody hear me up again? Yeah. Amen. Just testimony to who we are. Hallelujah. Because the devil hates you. He always hated the Hebrews, amen. Because we've been set apart. Hallelujah. We've been set apart by the Most High, by God. Amen. Amen. He always hated us. We talked about 400 years, if you remember, and how, amen, we would be a strange, we would be strangers in a strange land, in bondage, and treated evil, but only for a certain amount of time. And remember, we made a big deal of it last, amen, conference. We would only be in treated evil and in bondage and in this strange land for 400 years, period. You see? And that would be it. And that would be it. 400 years, period. That punctuation mark means a cessation. It means a termination. It means a conclusion. That in the mind of God, he had already 
already set a time limit. Amen. Hallelujah. And we saw that in American slavery, amen, our time started in 1619 when the first Hebrews landed on the shores of Jamestown. Huh? And so let me tell you, it's 2017, baby. Yeah. And we're two years away from 400 years, if you hear what I'm saying. All right? All right, baby. All right? And those of us that spiritual can see the shaking that's over there, yeah. can feel that something is restless in the people. All right? How do we, we don't even have to look at a calendar. Something is changing. Amen. It's changing in the heavens. It's changing in the atmosphere. And it's changing in the hearts and the minds of the people. You can feel it. You can feel it. And if you're not sensitive enough to feel it in others, you should be sensitive enough to feel it in your own self. Amen. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. 400 years. Hallelujah. And then we talked about judgment. Because the way that our God works, amen, sovereignly, yeah, he puts his people in, to be strangers in a strange land, and they're in bondage, amen, and part of the reason is because their own sins and their own wicked ways, but understand this, every nation that the Hebrews were ever put in captivity in, those nations were always judged by God, always judged by God. There is not an exception to the rule. Always, whether you're looking at Assyria, whether you're looking at Babylon, the list goes on and on. And America will be no different, saints. Right. If you remember last time, we looked at, amen, the signs of a current judgment that's already happening in our nation. The signs of current judgment. Huh? From the president that's been given to us, that's judgment. Huh? From the opioid crisis, that's judgment. To the fires that's going on in California that they, that they can't stop burning 101 miles an acre, uh, 101 miles, amen. One fire, burn it, huh? You see, when something is on fire, that's the judgment of God, see? Huh? We looked at everything from the reproduction rate in America, huh? We looked at it all. We see a nation that's under judgment. And not only is it under current judgment, but there is a future judgment looming as well. All right? And being the Hebrews, we can't get caught up with her, our people. Amen. We can't get caught up with the sins of Babylon, nor should we get caught up with the judgment of Babylon. Because while we are awakened, amen, the Gentiles are falling deeper and deeper into sleep and into a stupor. The same thing that happened to us when we murdered our Messiah is being put in reverse. All right? Our eyes were blinded. Our ears were stuffed up. But as we shall see, our eyes are being opened. Our ears are being opened. Amen? A new dispensation has happened. It's been written in the word of God. Amen? Shall he cast off his people Israel forever? God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. An awakening is happening. Huh? All you got to do is watch the signs. All you got to do is watch it. It's not happening to the other people that claim to be Hebrews. Yeah. It's not happening. Huh? It's happening in the people. Who are the people? We the people. That's right. That's right. Listen, tonight we want to talk about, <laughs> hallelujah, uh, specifically verse 6. And... Uh, the, 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 the title of this message is They Shall Come Forth. They Shall Come Forth. All right? And uh, I'm going to preach a seamless sermon tonight. I'll kind of show you, amen, the skeleton of it when we get to Deuteronomy here in a second. So you won't uh, think that I'm going to go on and on. I'm going to cover a certain amount of scriptures. But we want to focus on verse 7. The Bible says, And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage, God says, Will I judge, said God. And after that, shall they come forth and serve me in this place. All right? I had to skip that at the home church. Because this can't be preached anywhere. All right? If you're here tonight, you've been chosen to be here tonight. Oh, you're going to hear a word from the chosen. This ain't for everybody. That's why I skipped it back home. I skipped it. All the miles you traveled, all the different, hallelujah, traffic you passed up, amen. You've been chosen to be. 
Because you're about to hear the plan of God for you and the nation. Right? You've been chosen to be here. He that have ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church and to the kingdom tonight. They shall come forth. The Bible in verse 7, when it talks about them coming forth, amen, it says, in the B part of verse 7, it says, after that, after that. Whenever you see something like that, you say, what, after what, after what, Lord? After that, after being in a strange land, after being in bondage and slavery, after being uh, 400 years in an oppressive situation, after living in a hostile land, after God judging the nation that you were placed in captivity in, after that, God said, here's the timer, that's the timer. If you're looking for a timer, that's it, all right? After that, God says, they shall come forth. Huh? Who's the day he's talking about? The people of God. He's talking about the Hebrews. He's talking about the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and the seed of Jacob. All right? After that. No doubt this scripture, hallelujah, that Stephen is talking about is referring to the first Egyptian captivity. It's talking about when Moses went to Pharaoh, amen, after God had judged Egypt and said, let my people go. Yeah, this can be applied to that as well. Huh? If you remember, God poured out his judgment on Egypt. Hallelujah. The second Egypt follows the same pattern as the first. Right? And after God pours out his judgment, Pharaoh can't take it anymore. God, hallelujah, sends through the angel of uh, death, takes the firstborn of every family, and Pharaoh says, go, get out of here. All right? The Bible says that Israel marches out of Egypt with the bones of Joseph, with great substance of gold and silver, and all manner of spoils. If you remember, the story wasn't over, because when we marched out, Pharaoh saw that we got entangled in the land. And he came to himself and he said, what are we doing? Let me go all this free labor. Huh? And so he said, get my chariot. Get my chariot. He got his army ready. He got his army ready and he pursued after us. He pursued after Israel. And the Bible says that God put a separation between Pharaoh's army and Israel. To, hallelujah, on Pharaoh's side it was darkness. On Israel's side, amen, it was a pillar of fire to bring light. Huh? And Moses saw himself between a rock and a hard place. Moses saw Pharaoh's army on one side, Isaac. He saw the Red Sea on the other, and he didn't know what to do. God told Moses, he said, listen, Moses, in 1415, Moses, wherefore cries thou unto me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. Don't ever stop. Keep going forward. In 1421, Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea. And the Lord did what? Caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. And made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. This is important because remember the pattern. The second Egypt will be similar to the first. Right? In 22. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon what? Dry ground. And the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and on the left. For the ground, it sings I sing here. This is what we call the first exodus. But can I tell you tonight that the Bible tells us that not only would there be a first Egypt, a first captivity, hallelujah, not only that there'd, there'd be a second Egypt and a second captivity, but listen to me good. Just like there was a first exodus, get ready now, there will be a second exodus. All right? A second exodus. And that's exciting to me. That's exciting to me. That once again, God is going to rescue his people. And it's going to be just as miraculous. It's going to be just as historical, just as memorable. And, and listen, catch this, it's going to be just as lucrative and blessed and prosperous for God's people as the last the first exodus was. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. I'm trying to preach it. I'm trying to preach it. You got to believe the word of God in here. All right? Hallelujah. What has fallen upon you in the time that we are living in is such a blessing you don't even know the time you're in. 
Hallelujah. When we're about to see people wish they would have saw. Right? They wish it, they prayed for it. Huh? We're going to witness a second exodus. And I want to give you a little secret. It's a foreshadow. Because any, if you know anything about God, huh? God always saves the best for that. Now you're feeling me up here. He's not going to just duplicate the second just like the first. If the first was miraculous, the second is going to be more miraculous. Anybody hear me up here? And I'm going to show you scripture to corroborate that and, and validate that for you. All right? He always goes from glory to glory, from strength to strength. If the first covenant was glorious, the second covenant will be more glorious. Listen to me now. And if the first exodus was glorious, the second exodus will knock your socks off. Come on, give God some glory, amen. But where do we hear about this second exodus? Where is it? Because, Pastor, you just can't come here and just get me all excited and don't show me in the Word. You got to, you got to show me in the Word. Well, I have you know tonight that the second exodus has been in our body. It's been in our body. And God don't take long to talk about the second exodus. In fact, right after the first exodus, he begins to talk about the second exodus. All right? Just like, hallelujah, when, hallelujah, one of the first national prophets came, Moses. Right after Moses came, he began to talk about the greater prophet that would come. Amen. Anybody hear me? Amen. He's always set it up. He's always set it up. And listen, I'm a turn, and if you have your Bible, you can, you can go there. But, but I'll put it up on the screen for those who can see it. We're going to look at Deuteronomy, amen. We're going to go into the Pentateuch, amen, into Deuteronomy. And, 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 the, and the writer of Deuteronomy is no other than Moses, amen. The man of God that God would use to usher his people through the first exodus, huh? Would be the same man of God. The one who went through the first exodus would be the same one to tell us about the second exodus. Yeah. Yeah. The same one. The same one. So it's in Deuteronomy 30 is what we want to kind of hone in on tonight. And listen, I told you it was going to be a seamless sermon, so just so that you can know we won't be here till midnight, I'm going to preach Deuteronomy 30, verses 1 through 6, and then we're going to stop. That's going to be it. All right? 1 through 6. Now, I never told you how long I was going to take on each verse. All right? Just so you can know, there is a beginning. There is a end of this time. All right? A seamless sermon don't mean it's an everlasting sermon. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's look at Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1 and look at what the Bible says about the second exodus. Right? It tells us in verse 1 here in Moses, it says, It shall come to pass when all these things all come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord thy God had driven thee. So Moses is beginning to talk about the second exodus. All right? First exodus has already passed. And as we look at the previous chapters, 29 to 28, we realize that Moses has already given the people of God the formula that God gave them to survive and to be blessed. He gave them in 28, there's blessings of obedience. And if you obey me, amen, hey, God, you won't even be able to handle all the blessings that's coming your way. Right? But at the same time, God said, but if you disobey me, there's going to be some repercussions. There's going to be some consequences now. And 28 is all about the blessings and the curses of the law. And the funny thing in chapter 30, Moses is telling us that we as a people, the Hebrews, we're going to go through both cycles. We're going to go through a cycle, amen, where we're obedient and we're going to get blessed. Hallelujah. We'll have our land and we'll be flowing milk and honey. Amen. We'll be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath the leather and not the bar. Amen. That's the story of our people. Amen. A rich history. 
And in chapter 30, Moses is saying, yeah, you're going to have all that. You're going to have that. All right? But Moses would also tell him, when you get rich, and when you get blessed, you're prone to forget where you got your blessings from. That's why God would always tell him, listen, remember, it is the Lord thy God that giveth thee the power to get well. He'd always tell him, don't forget me, remember me, remember me, remember me. Because he knew that we would forget. And so in 30 verse 1, Moses, he says, Moses, he says, it shall come to pass. When all these things are come upon thee, what things, Moses? Huh? The blessings and the curse. Why both the blessings and the curse? Because you will be obedient. But you will also forget and you're going to be disobedient. Right? The Bible tells us just one of the segments of the curse. Deuteronomy 28, 64. When we would be disobedient, and the Lord shall scatter thee. Shall scatter thee. Where? Among all the from the one end of the earth even unto the other. Right? Scatter you. Right? That's part of the curse. That's part of our disobedience. Right? And so the Bible says here, and it shall come to pass when all these things come upon thee, the blessings and the curse, and part of that curse was us being scattered. Huh? And that's where we are right now. Which I have said before thee, that when you are cursed, and when you scatter, and when you're chilling in other nations and don't have your own home, yeah. huh? when they say you don't have no history, no lineage, you don't even know where you come from, they can only trace your history back to the slave ship. When that happens, and I get ready for you, and it's almost time, and the alarm is about to go off, and the 400 years is almost over, look at it, thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whether the Lord thy God had driven thee. This excited me. Because the Bible was saying that we disobeyed and cursed us and we were scattered. But in the land of our captivity, while we've been treated, hallelujah, in a hostile fashion, that something would come over us, Dr. Chambers and Brother Kelly, that some kind of way we would call some things to mind. Yeah, yeah. Now listen to me. Nobody would have to teach us. Woo, God. It would just come back to our mind. Yeah, yeah. All right? And it wouldn't be another nation that would do it. It wouldn't be another people that would do it. No. We would just be sitting down. And when God would get ready, it would just come back where? To our mind. Oh, somebody got to hear me. All right? Do you think God is strong enough? Huh? To bring some things back to your mind. That's what he says. He says, you're going to be chilling. Huh? Huh? In the curse, in the scattered land, and some things going to come back to your mind. Huh? All that I told you just going to come back to your mind. How blessed you could be if you'd obey me, and how cursed you would be for disobeying. It's all going to come back to you. Huh? All of a sudden. A movement, a, a shake. Nobody could explain it. Nobody could explain it. Huh? Not a wrong time movement, but a right time movement. Huh? Because some of y'all been here, you've been, the, you, you've been the people for 10, 20 years. But it wasn't a right time. Right. It wasn't a rainbow word, a, a word spoken in due season. How sweet it is, the Bible says. He said, when the time gonna come, he gonna call it to you. Right. In the Apocrypha, in the book uh, or Baruch, or if you want to say Barak, <laughs> chapter 2, verse 30. Look what God says while we in that foreign captivity land. For I knew that they would not hear me. Mm -hmm. no. Because it is a stiff-necked people. That's us when we were supposed to be with him. Stiff-necked. Huh? I'm going to put them through. And they're going to go through some things. They couldn't hear me when they were blessed. But in the land of their captivities, they 
they shall remember. Yeah. What are they going to remember? They're going to remember themselves. They're going to remember themselves. Are you feeling it, fellas, back there? They're going to remember themselves. Are you feeling it? You see what I'm saying? You're going to remember who you are. Come on. And you're going to remember who you are. Nobody's going to tell you that. Nobody's going to tell you that. You got to look for no other nationality to instruct you. Uh uh. He said, they going to remember themselves. In fact, when it come back to our memory and when other nationalities hear us say, they're going to think we have lost our mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can think we have lost our mind because it had not been called to your mind, but God done put it in my mind. You know what I mean? I don't remember myself. In the land of the captain, they shall remember themselves, he says. And in 31, he says, and shall know that I am the Lord their God. He says, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. You see, when the gospel had to get out to the Gentiles, that's what was touched by God on us. Our heart and our ears. Oh, slow of heart to believe. Huh? Anybody hear me up in here? Huh? Couldn't hear him. Couldn't, couldn't see what he was doing. But we was blinded for a season that the Gentiles might be seen. Anybody here? Are you, are you hearing me up in here? But in the right time, amen, the curse will be reversed. And we shall remember ourselves. And, he will, and, we, and we will call to mind some things. And, and he will bless us with a heart and with ears to hear. I've been watching my people closely. And something is happening to our hearts and our ears. Or are you feeling it going on? Something's happening in our hearts. There is a more of a unity that's happening. In our hearts, there is a more of a compassion for one another. There is a more of standing up for one another. There is a more of wanting to be with one another. There is a more. You wouldn't be here if something wasn't happening in your heart. That's why you drove and that's why you flew out. Because the ears have been open. You done heard something. And God says, My sheep, they know my voice, they, they hear my voice, and they, they follow me out. Gave them ears and a heart. I, I've been watching my people. Yes, Lord. And in the places where you would least expect, hearing in a heart, I'm seeing it. Yes, I'm seeing it. In the ghettos and in the hoods, amongst the drug dealers and in the drug users, there's something that's moving. The dry bones, I feel a shaking going on. I feel a, a rumbling going on. They, they get to see the time. post office, man, the other day. And I was out there with a gangster fella. Me and him never got along back in the day. Every time we saw each other, we wanted to fight me and him. You know? And he, he, you know what I'm saying? He out there at the post office, amen, and I see him. I say, oh, Lord. He, <laughs> he was just one of them hard hitters. Y'all never know him? Some of them like that? Some of y'all used to be like that. I say, Lord, I'm saved now. We'll say, well, how you going to play out? <laughs> you hear me, kid? I'm like, you know? So he come up to me, man, and, and he, had, he got a little problem with communication and stuff like that. But me and him started talking. Amen. He began to talk about the Lord. Oh, right. Right. I said, the Lord? <laughs> he began to tell me how he was in a bad accident and, and almost lost his life. And, and you see, I know a lot of other people give credence and credit to other things, but, but the Hebrews who've been given the oracles of God, they always go come back. Hey, from the rock from which they were you. He began to say it was the Lord. It was the, it was the most high God. You don't understand, this was a knucklehead of knuckleheads. 
when he's showing me his phone, he got to say, excuse me, because he, he's showing me the AR-15 and, and the different things he got on his phone. This was a gangster, man. Yes. I told me I'm changing my ways. Yes. I got three kids. I got a small one, a three-year-old. He told me to pray for me. I said, Lord, he's going to change. That's not the only one I've seen. You remember the one we saw at the funeral the other day? His eyes different. Heart is different. He's given us ears and a heart is to hear him. Come on, give God to the Lord. Come on. He says in 32, and this is what PMG is all about. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity. Even while we hear before we come forth, a praise is going to go before us. Amen. Oh, Satan going to know Judah is back. He said, oh, a praise is going to go out. They back. They back. Because before every movement, there goes out a sound. Listen to me, PMG is just the tip of the iceberg. Wherever you're from, you're going to start the same thing. You're going to start putting out the news and God's going to bless you. A sound got to go out before the move of God. See, they would remember themselves. I'm going to give them a heart. And saints, listen, this is just the beginning of the second exodus. I ain't got into it yet. So let's keep going. Look at Deuteronomy 30 and verse 2. I feel the presence of God. Man. You feel the presence of God? Yeah. Huh? 30 and verse 2. It says this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He says, listen, after they shall call to mind, amen, among the nations. So go ahead to their mind. Verse 2. The Bible says, and they shall return unto the Lord thy God and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children with all thy heart and with all thy soul. God says after our mind changes and after he gives us a heart and an ear to hear him. You see? You see, when we hear him, you know, there's no way to stay the same after you hear God. There's no way to stay the same after you hear God. I mean, the people, amen, that stay the same after they've been in the presence of the voice of God, they had not heard him. But we hear it him. And after you hear him, a turning happens. A turning. And that turning, Kendrick and Sean, is none other than repentance. That's all repentance is. It's a change of mind and it's a turning. It's, a, it's not a 360, huh? It's a 180. Huh? It's not a 360 where you turn and get back to where you was. No, 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 no. It's a turn from sin. And it's a turn to God. All right? In the second Exodus, this is what's happening. It's a change of mind. He's going to call to mind. And then there's going to be a turn. A turn from sin and a turn to God. Huh? Obeying Him. A repentance. This is what Second Chronicles is all about. Huh? In 714, if my people. Don't that verse sound better to you tonight? Huh? Because it was written for you. He says, if my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and do what? And turn from their wicked ways. Do you see the 180? They're turning towards God. They're turning away from sin. He says, then he's going to do something. He says, then I will hear from heaven. Forgive their sin and heal their land. Come on, give God some glory here. We're going to get to in a second. What you need to understand is that repentance and obedience always precedes restoration. Do you see it here? He changes our mind. Amen. We turn to him. Amen. We turn from our sin. We turn to him and we begin to obey him. All right. This always precedes restoration. This is the mode of of operandi of our God. This is his modus operandi. This is his, his, his M.O. we say it in the criminal justice system. Amen. What's his M.O.? What's his mode of operation? We're looking for character traits. We're looking for what my 
my children would say would be a pattern of activity, amen. Well, God has a pattern, amen. That's why Moses said, Lord, show me your ways, amen. I want to know your patterns because if I could know your patterns, if I know your ways, then the devil could never trick me up because I know your ways. I know how you do it, Lord. Yes. I'll never be deceived because I'll be able to know that this is not consistent with the pattern and the ways of my you got to know his ways. Right? The Bible tells us here, amen, that his ways, amen, the ways of God, when he reveals it to you, you always know that before restoration, before God restores you and prospers you and puts you back where you're supposed to be, there is, also, there is always repentance, turning, <coughs> Obedience. This is our story between us and our God from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Amen. Right? All you got to do is crack open the book of Judges. Judges is all about a wayward people. Amen. Who bless and then they turn. And the book of Judges would say, and the children of Israel, every man did what was right in his own eyes. And then what would happen? All right? Because of sin, hallelujah, comes the curse. And so they would be sold into the hands of some enemy. Uh, it could have been uh, the Philistines. It could have been, as though it were, the Midianites, as in Gideon's name. All right? So that's the pattern. Sin, sold into slavery, huh? And then they cry out. Cry out. They turn back to God. God have mercy. God, here we are. Whom have we in heaven but thee? There's none on that we have, there's none that we desire on earth but thee, oh God, oh God, forgive us our transgressions. Turn upon us, cause thy face to shine upon us again. And God, huh? A broken and a contrite heart, he cannot despise. Huh? And in Judges, he would turn right back to us, Isaac. Send us, as though it was, the judges would, would say, send us a savior with a small s or a judge. Someone like Samson, someone like Deborah, the rock, uh, Ehud, a Gideon. Huh? Sin, slavery, repentance, restoration. It is the pattern of the most high God. There is, there is no example of restoration without our turning. Yes, yes. Even in our own salvation experience with our God in the new covenant. You can't just come to God, never admitting that you're a sinner and that you need Christ and that you're sorry for the ways, amen, that you've been living, amen. Listen to me. Huh? Repentance in a broken heart is the way in unto God. You can't even get saved without it. Let alone be restored to your homeland. Let alone be restored to who you once was as a nation. This begs the question. Huh? Well, how did those people get down our land? How in the world? Huh? How in the world are they going to say that's the real people? Come on. How in the world are they going to receive, if they don't read the real people, how in the world are they going to receive the land without repentance and turning back to God? How are they going to do that? How are they going to do that? Huh? When you got the homosexual capital world out there in Tel Aviv, and you're trying to turn out Jerusalem, the city of the king, with, with decadence parades? Huh? While you own every single media outlet in America and around the world, and you're putting so much film on the TV that you're turning out children in elementary school. Oh yeah, by the way, you own the schools too. And all you do is teach evolution, which we call evolution, and you teach our kids that they're not created in the image of God, but in the image of a monkey or slime. That's what you're teaching, and you mean to tell me that God is going to restore a land to you that current spiritual situation, the devil is alive. This is coming up. Once you know the ways, you can't be deceived. You can't be deceived. You can't be deceived. Right? Because you know God 
would never do that like that. Amen. Right? Right? Repentance and obedience always precedes restoration. Deuteronomy 30 and 3. Y'all still awake? Yeah. All right? They shall come forth. This is where we're going. And he's just preparing us for the second exodus. And we're not even there yet, y'all. He's just dealing with our mind, calling us back in our minds. And then we're going to turn, amen, that 180 pivot and begin to search after him and go after him and repent of our misdeeds. And then in three, hallelujah, when we repent and turn to him, the Bible says then, somebody say then. Amen. Then the Lord, thy God, will turn thy captivity. That word then is important. It's a conditional word. That tells us that God will not move unless we do something first. <laughs> you say, God has some conditional promises? Oh, yeah, friends. If you sow, then you shall reap. <laughs> it's a conditional promise. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom. It's conditional based upon some things. Right? And us being released from captivity. Is conditional upon our relationship with the Most High. How in the world did these people fool us for so long? How could we have missed it? They could be, hallelujah, some of the greatest Luciferians in the, on the planet. And somehow we think that they are blessed by God. Blessed! That's two different things. Recognize that God is not the only one who blesses in the earth. Right? You don't remember what Satan told Jesus? I give you all the kingdoms of the world. If you fall down, then you worship. All right? I wonder if since our Lord, hallelujah, uh, refused that deal, I wonder if they took him. <laughs> Deuteronomy 3.30 says, Then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. And then what's, what God going to do when we turn and respond to him? He's going to have what we call compassion on us. Somebody say compassion. Compassion, compassion means to suffer with. Amen. It means that when you go through, I'm going to go through with you. Amen. And when you feel pain, I'm going to feel the pain with you. Amen. All right? And this is God. Found the scripture in Jeremiah 31 28. The Lord let me tell you, it's going to be such, hallelujah, a blessing of the scripture, amen, if we can look at it tonight. It's about his compassion. God told Israel, he's telling us about the second Exodus here. He says, And it shall come to pass that, like as I have watched over them to pluck up, to break down, to throw down, and to destroy, and to afflict. So will I watch over them to build and to plan, saying the Lord. Amen. The scripture is so powerful. Amen. You see, because when we was doing wrong, huh? He tracked us down. He said, "There's no place you could run from this curse. No matter where you go, it's gonna follow you." And God is saying here. Just as adamant as he was to curse us in our disobedience, he will be that adamant and more to bless us in our obedience. As he sought to break us down and to pluck us up, he's going to seek to plant us again. Hallelujah. As he sought to destroy, he's going to seek to build. Huh? In 32, 42 of Jeremiah, look what he says. I'm going to just read the B part. He says, now let's read it all. For thus saith the Lord, like as I have brought all this great evil upon this people, the Hebrews, all the translated slave trade, the lynch mobs, the oppression, the rapes, all of those things that we're still going through today as a people. He said, like I brought all this evil upon this people. When we turn, look what he says. So will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. Come on, give God some glory. Come on, give him some glory. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for some good. I'm ready for some good. I'm ready for the word trouble don't last all I'm ready for joy to come in the morning. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Come on, look at your name. I ask him, are you ready for some good? Look at your other name. It says coming, it's coming, it's coming. That's right. That's right. It's the word of God. It's all about just as our punishment was perfect and pervasive, so will be our restoration. 
way God operates, man, is the way He operates. Huh? He always gives you double for your trouble. You just had your trouble, huh? If it's if it is His will for you to go through, when you come out on the other side, you're gonna be better for it. You're gonna be better for it. Israel, listen. Israel, listen. To huh? Yeah. Yeah, it was tough. Huh? But God ain't finished with you yet. Amen. The story is not over just yet. Amen. Hallelujah. He says in Deuteronomy, or rather, hallelujah, let's go back to Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. He talks about, hallelujah, not only in verse 3, the compassion. He says, but hallelujah, I'm going to have compassion upon you and we'll return. And this is what he says. I'm going to gather you. I'm going to gather you. I'm going to gather you. You see what we're here doing tonight? I'm going to gather you. You see, well, Pastor, this is this is just, we just 150. Listen, don't despise me come against us. Don't you ever do that. Don't you ever do that. Don't you ever despise me come against us. Understand his ways. Hmm? When God moves, it's not always being. Uh -huh. He not in the earthquake. He not in the fire. He, he not in oh, God in the world. Hey, hey, God, but when you're going to hear a still small voice. Huh? Huh? Just a, just a still small voice. Huh? In a little city somewhere in Louisiana. Oh. In a little city in Florida, right? Or just a little, little, little still, small voice. Oh. Huh? That's how he moved. I remember, amen, when Elijah was praying for rain. Huh? Oh. And he sent his servant up there. And his servant up there, he went up there. He said, there's no rain. He said, go look. Go look again. Keep looking. Because I know the promise. I know the promise. All right? And rain is on the way. Rain is on the way. All right? And the prophet come back, he straight his eye. He see just a little cloud. <laughs> just a little cloud. And he see, he describes the cloud. How big is the cloud? It's the size of a man's head. What you gonna do with a cloud the size of a man's head? I got news for you today. This, this first fruit group that we have tonight, huh, huh, is the size of a man's head. When he came, he didn't, he didn't pick up a, uh, a thousand disciples. He picked twelve. The side of a man's head. Right? He's going to gather. It's going to be little groups. Little groups like these, 150. Little groups at your house. Little groups with you, putting on YouTube with your friends and family. Little groups at the school or at the workplace. Little groups. Huh? Huh? I'm telling you. But it's amazing what a little fire can do. Yeah. It's amazing what the Bible can huh? huh? He's gonna gather. He's gonna gather. Alright? When he says gather, amen, the Bible says he's gonna gather us from all the nations. Yeah. Whether the Lord thy God has scattered us. Listen to me, good. We've been scattered. Hallelujah. Across the face of the earth. Yes, yes, yes. And there's no other nation that can claim that. Right. Right. Not just in Europe, we everywhere. Amen. Amen. Scatter. Scatter. We fit the bill. Brent, show us the transatlantic slave trade, please. We've been scattered. Now, you know about the transatlantic slave trade, amen, but a lot of people don't know about the slave trade that took place, amen, on the east side of Africa. Come on. Which was the slave trade, amen, that encompassed the Indian Ocean. And whether you know it or not, the Hebrews were a part of both of those slave trades. But there was the ferocious in, 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 uh, in Ethiopia, amen, that's, that's still uh, Hebrews going in uh, Israel right now, amen. Or it was us in the West, amen. But we were moving out of Africa, amen, in the slave trade and being scattered across the face of the whole earth, right? I'll tell you something good, all right? Now, there's a lot of us in America right now, but it didn't start off that way. Amen? There was only a few of us that came to America. If a million, huh? But just like God promised Abraham, and just what happened in the first Egypt, amen? They went to the first Egypt, just 70 souls, and came out of nation. Some, stati some statistics show that we came to America less than a million, and we are 42 million strong right now. Woo! But read the book of Revelations. 
But they talk about the woman who would have the child. Huh? And that the devil would be upset with her because she had the child that would rule the nations with a rod of iron. And when the dragon went to get the child, he was taken up into heaven. Sound like a resurrection to me. Away from the face of the dragon. When the dragon saw that he couldn't get to the child, he was wroth with the woman and went to make war. How did he get with the woman and the remnant of her seed? Hey, God, somebody got to hear me. And that was given two wings to the woman. Two wings, two wings. Like an eagle. Come on. Come on. You understand what nation you in today? She was given two wings like an eagle. When she flew with those wings into a wilderness, there she would be nourished for a time, times, and a half. Not forever, but just nourished. What does the word nourish mean? To feed, to nurture, to take care, till you're stronger than that. Take it back to who you are. We were just not scattered to, hallelujah, North America. No. We were scattered to South America and Central America and the Caribbean as well. In fact, statistics show that more of us went to South America than even came to North America. And what most people don't know is that when you go to South America, they might speak Spanish, but they are all Hebrew descent. You gotta know something here. In fact, in Brazil, huh, a large portion of Brazilians, in fact, the majority of Brazilians, have what they call Afro descent, but we would call it Hebrew descent. There's some calculations that say that there are 85 million strong Hebrew descent, or what we call black, or they call Afro descent people in Brazil. Listen to me. He told Abraham, he said, Abraham, you're small in number now. But look at the stars. If you can number the stars, so shall thy seed. Abraham, look at the sand on the seashore. If you can number the granules of the sand, amen, so shall thy seed be. You will have an innumerable multitude and kings and priests shall come out of thee, Abraham. Isn't it funny that God would tell Abraham that he would be the father of nations? Wait, wait, wait. I'm a Hebrew. I'm only one nation. You're missing it, Abraham. I'm going to take your people and scatter them to different places and they're going to be called different names. They'll be Brazilian here and they'll be Haitian here and they'll be American here and they'll be European here. But it's all one people from one group of Abraham. Abraham, you shall be the father of nations. Scattered, scattered, scattered. And not only in Brazil, Venezuela as well. Millions in Venezuela. In fact, the president that just passed away, Hugo Chavez. Look at him good. Look at him good. Afro descent. Look at that nose. <laughs> Afro descent. Hebrews. 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 You hear in America go play a special part. Yes, Lord. And the Hebrews regather in the world. You go tell them who they are and who's they are. You see, Judah from Judah, the scepter would yeah, never yeah, die. And from thee shall come the gathering. Ah! My God! My God! My God! Who are you? Who are you in this place? You're a gatherer. Nations shall follow you. Yes, Lord. You're Judah. Yeah. Come on, give God some glory. us first. You see, they, yeah, we all know the place scattered in the United Kingdom, in France, huh? the Caribbean. He's going to gather them all. And we get emails, amen, while we're talking about gathering, they say, Pastor Omar, don't you forget us down here in the Caribbean. When the Lord come get y'all, y'all better get that boat to stop this joy. That's what they tell me. They say, don't you forget us down here. How can we forget? How can we forget? You're our people. Come on.
come on, give God some glory. Amen. The Dominican Republic, Trinidad, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, Cuba. Millions of us down there. Millions. Huh? And they don't give us the right numbers. They don't give us the right numbers. You ain't never heard Brazil was that black. Brazil is the second blackest nation in the world. The first blackest nation is Nigeria in Africa. And Brazil is the second. You got peoples all over the world. He will gather us. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. Woo! All right, all right, don't I sleep in yet, huh? Let me take you to Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. We're talking about the second Exodus here. All right? Hosea. All right? <coughs> this text almost made me cry. All right? He says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass, here it is, that in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people. There, there, even that place, that place where you were said it was nothing, that place you were said you ain't had no history, that place that you were said, listen, the people hallelujah, from your own continent gave you up. You have no home. That place, that place that they would laugh at you. Of course, you cannot be the people of God. Huh? In that place where you heard, you are not my people. Listen to me. There it shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. I'm telling you here tonight. You are the sons of the living God. You are the right. You are the Hebrew. Huh? That's just the way God said it would happen. That's just the way God said it would happen. Huh? Don't let nobody tell you who you are. Huh? You're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. A nation created to bring praise and glory and honor to the most high God. A nation to be a light to the Gentiles. A nation where one of you, seven of them will come and hold on to your skirt and say, take us to your God. We heard that God was with you. Because after they see this separate access, after they see what God do with what, how did he do with us, amen, they're going to say, oh yeah, there's a God. And they are his people. Come on, give God some glory. In the place where they told you you're not his people. When they don't say you are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. Some say that's some Jesus. Others say that's a political head. And they shall come up out the land for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have in my notes here. The last place where the world would look for the people of God, that is where they will find them. <laughs> All right, we're almost done. Deuteronomy 30 in verse 4. We only covered how many verses in Deuteronomy? That's right. We're talking about the second exodus. They shall come forth. Amen. And God is just prepared. Remember? He changed their mind. He called to mind. They turned. They came to repentance. They began to obey him again. Amen. And then he says, listen, I'm going to turn you captivity. And I will begin to gather you. And he's just gathering us now. All right? And this is where we are. We're in a gathering phase. Amen. Verse 4. He says, if any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. I love this verse because it tells us that any Hebrew who wants to be with God, he's going to go get them wherever they are. It don't matter what nation, what neighborhood, what slum, what shanty town, amen. If you want to be with God, if 
you love the Lord and if you have accepted Christ, he's going to get us from the outmost parts of heaven. This literally means he will gather us from one end of heaven to the other. Isaiah 27 and 12 says that God is so adamant about this. Amen. He's even willing to go and get us one at a time. You hearing me up in here? There will be none left behind that want God, that want to be a part of the kingdom, that want to be a part of his Hebrew people. God will get all of us in Jesus' name. Come on, give God some glory. Hallelujah. See, the fact of the matter is, we don't know who all is Hebrew, but he knows. <laughs> he knows. You see? You see? Yes. And let me tell you something else. This gathering, amen, the nations won't get mad at, but no nation will be able to stop. I got a question for you. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Huh? Can, they, can anybody stay in his hand? Is there any counsel or might against the Lord? No. When God says something that settles it, amen. No matter what America say, Canada say, Mexico say, Europe say, Russia say, uh, the state of Israel down there, no matter what nobody says. Whatever God says, hallelujah, that settles it. Amen. He says here in Ezekiel 20 and 33 about the second exodus, he says, as I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand, and with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. Now, this language, amen, is very familiar. When he says, with a mighty hand, and an outstretched arm, this is familiar language. If you know your Bible, just doing a panoramic survey of scripture, you would feel like he said that before. And I'm going to tell you why he said it. He said it in the first Exodus. When with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, he led his people out of Egypt. Amen. Listen to me. God is saying for the second Exodus, he's going to do the same thing. When he says a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, he's talking about miracles. He's talking about moving heaven and earth to get his people where they need to be. Are you listening to me? All right. Not only will he gather us, but when it's time to go, our God, amen, will make miracles happen, amen. The star shall usher us back to where we need to be. Anybody hearing me? This is another reason why, amen, the astronauts, amen, hallelujah, in our land are not the people. Mm -hmm. huh? Because the second exodus, hallelujah, will make the first exodus, amen, look like a nursery school. It's going to make it look like elementary. It's going to make it look like daycare. Because God is going to do something bigger and something better and something more miraculous in this second exodus. All right? All right? Pastor, what are you saying? Listen, I'm telling you. Look at at Ezekiel 20 and 34, all right? After he says a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, he says, I will bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered with a mighty hand, all right? Pastor, explain that. All right, I'm glad you asked. Zechariah 10 and 11. I'm trying to move so I don't put you on a bed. Y'all still up? Yeah. All right, all right. Zechariah 10, hallelujah. Uh, yeah, yeah, 10 10 is good. With that knee outstretched on mighty hand. It means miracles. Look what he says about the second Exodus. I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt. Because some people say, he's talking about the first Egypt. Get your Bible right there. This is the second Egypt. And it's nobody, it's not Babylon. I'm bringing you out again from what? From Egypt. I'm bringing you again out of the land of Egypt. And gather them out of Assyria because he's scattered, he's gathered from wherever we scattered. And I will bring them in the land of Gilead, Lebanon, a place shall not, and place shall not be found for them. There's going to be so many of us. Huh? Verse 11. This is him bringing us. Now he's gathered us, now he's bringing us there. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction. The seas are supposed to be boisterous, huh? It's supposed to be the sea of affliction, huh? A lot of us would be on that boat or somewhere and get seasick, huh? The sea of affliction, huh? But how many people know when God is part of it, amen? The blessings of the Lord make it rich and add it no sorrow. Anybody hear me? Of it? And the Bible says, and he, that's God, shall smite the waves of the sea. And 
the new translations record this. When God is ready, after he gathers us to bring us back to our land, he's going to make the sea smooth so we can cross over. He's going to feel like you on our tent. Amen? In a cat. Amen? Hallelujah. And when we get there, guess what? I'm talking about miracles, all right? I'm talking about miracles, the second Egypt, second Exodus. All right? And when we get there, if there's any rivers in our way, huh? Like the Red Sea was in their way, huh? The Bible says, and all the deeps of the river shall be what? Dry. Yeah. They're, they're, when these people went to their land, ain't nothing was dry. Huh? He didn't smite no sea like in the first act. He says, listen, we're going to see some miracles. Show me. Huh? I'm talking about bread from heaven, water from a rock, sea split and toe tapping action. Right? right? Now wait, wait. I'm feeling a little down in here. Come on. Come on. You don't, you don't feel a little down. You don't. As though God can't split a seat. Come on. Huh? Huh? As though God can't regather his people in the dry of rivers. You feel that? Liz? Yeah. You feel that? Yeah. Like they couldn't believe that. I have you know. My God is so big, yeah. so strong, and so mighty. Yeah. There's nothing my God cannot do. Yeah. The mountains are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His hand that work too. That's right. Right? That's how big He is. And when we get on the move, He's gonna do miracles. And listen, that's why we ain't got to move, y'all. He's gonna move us. Our job is just to be gathered, to obey, to, to get together, to learn about who we are. Listen. It ain't no uh, uh, premature going over there packing our bags. No, no, no. We don't know when it's time. The creation going to tell us the time. Mom's going to start moving and getting out the way. Amen. Animals going to start ushering us there. Amen. I'm talking about miracles. That's good. That's good. I'm talking about miracles. We got to worry about me showing up to y'all. Let's go. It ain't nothing like that. No, 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 no. When it's time to go, we all going to be standing there saying, it's time. It's time. Good. All right? All right? They're going to try to stop us. Jeremiah 30, 11, God's going to be judging these nations. And uh, back at the home church, we talked about, amen, the coming world commandment that's coming World War III, amen. And, um, and I'm going to tell you in regards to timing of us getting actually back to the land, um, if I had to tell you a time you know, no man knows the day or the hour of the Lord's return. And so I can't give you like, oh, it's going to be September 24th. But <laughs> what I can tell you is, is that when we return, it's going to be right on the heels of the, the second coming of our Lord. It's going to be right on the heels of that. And also, amen, it's going to be a time, amen, where the world will have just been in a social cataclysm. It's going to be wars. Amen. To no end. And I'm going to show you why. Amen. Because when we get back to our home, we're going to have to rebuild it from the ground up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because he's going to, it's going to be war going on, on on those grounds. Amen. Uh, that nation, our nation is going to vomit up the inhabitants. Wow. That's there right now. Amen. <laughs> they don't belong there. All right? So that's why you got fires going on right now. Even right. down there. Amen. Hallelujah. Because, amen, the land knows who's supposed to be on it. That's why the Bible says the earth groans for the revelation of the sons of God. You see what I'm saying? The earth knows, amen, who's supposed to be on it and who's not. Amen. So the timing, amen, is not something that, amen, we, we have to hurry up and be laid down. We write on God's timing right now. It's a gathering that's taking place, amen. And we're going to be right on the heels, amen, of this return. Hallelujah. And we're going to see some things in our day. Amen. I was planning on preaching a revelation, amen, and talking about, hallelujah, uh, the nuclear devastation that's coming, amen, because revelation predicts it, amen, uh, uh, but it's not ready. Maybe the, maybe the next school of Hebrews, that's going to be ready for me to preach on the seals and the, and the, and the trumpets, amen. Uh, uh, but be, be watchful, saints, amen. We're going to see some trouble, amen. We're going to see some trouble, amen. But, but, but though we see trouble, listen, a thousand shall fall at your right hand. Ten thousand at your left, but it shall not come down. And what I did not tell you, amen, 
understand about the nuclear calamity that's coming, amen, it happens in Revelation chapter 6, amen, but right after that in Revelation chapter 7, after we see John's illusion of the mushroom cloud, the Lord tells his angels, amen, he tells his angels, he says, tell the four corners of the earth, the winds of the four corners of the earth, not to blow, not to blow. You got to understand something. Whenever a nuclear bomb, amen, explodes, it's not the explosion, but it's the radiation. It's the fallout from the radiation that's carried with the wind. After John says that the sky's going to be rolled up like a scroll, which is a symbol of a, of a mushroom cloud, John uh, immediately goes to chapter 7, where God tells the angels, wind, don't blow. Don't blow. Don't blow. Hold everything. Winds do not blow. Until we go through and seal the servants of the Most High God. Amen. Because after I seal, certain things ain't going to be on the earth. And so he took 12,000 from Judah and sealed them. He took 12 from here, 12 from there. Listen to me now. You're going to see some things. You're going to see some Though the mountains be removed. Though the seas are swallowed. Listen, don't you be afraid. Don't you be afraid. Look what God says in Jeremiah 30, 11. Says, he says, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all the nations, whether I have scattered thee, yet I will not make a full end of me. He tells us other places in the book of Isaiah, amen. He said, you're engraved on my hands. He said, your walls are ever before me. He said, can a, a mama forget her nursing baby? That scripture's about you. You've been reading that for somebody else. It's about you. And he knew that a drug epidemic would eventually come. He said, some may forget but I'm never going to forget you. I'm never going to forget you. Never going to forget you, Israel. Never. You see? He says, well, I love you with an everlasting love. Deuteronomy 35. We are almost done. Almost done. Huh? Thank y'all for being patient with me. Amen. For staying up with me as we gather. Yes. As we gather, as Judah and Israel gathers again. <clears throat> 30 and verse 5, here we go. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land. Here's the Exodus, and here we get there. He will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. Listen, a lot of times we talk about, oh, we'll take any other land, stuff like that. We'll go to Africa, we'll do this. That's not God's promise. No. It's not his promise. It's not his promise for you to get a little piece of land off in Bassett Cafe, Johnson Street, and out here. You call that Israel. That's not his promise. All right? You can do that, amen, to wait for the Lord to come get us, all right? But listen, that's not the end game. The end game is I'm going to bring you to the land that your fathers possess. That's the land. Look what he says in case you don't know. He says, thou shalt possess it. Because even after I tell you I'm going to bring you, there you go, thou. He says, I'm going to bring you there. Oh, God. you like Sarah laughing. Oh, God. Huh? Shall I find pleasure in this old age? God says, yeah. Come on. Yeah, I'm going to bring you. And you're going to possess it. Yes, and you're going to possess it. <laughs> and he will do thee good. Multiply thee above thy fathers. That means that if you thought Israel had it good, the first will be <laughs> The second time's the trouble. <laughs> Double farm trouble. Come on, give God some glory, man. <clears throat> As we get to Jeremiah 30, I just want to quickly look at verse 18 before we get to verse 6 through 11. This is how, amen, I'm, I'm, I'm believing that, amen, when we get back, it's probably going to look like Syria look right now. Devastation. And Jeremiah, in 30, talking about the restoration, 
the second Exodus. And you can go up and read a little bit more, but for sake of time, he says, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents and have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be built upon her own heap. That means you're going to build it, hallelujah, on top of rubble, on top of ruins. Amen. After God wiped the slate clean of people that don't belong there. Amen. You're going to build it again. Amen. It's going to be the way it was supposed to be. This flip of the script is going to be so awesome. It's going to be so miraculous. that when God does this for us, they will no longer talk about the first Egypt. Are you hearing me? You know how we always talk about Egypt? And me, I'm, 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 I'm good for that. When I'm praying, I can't help but pray about Egypt. I can be praying about somebody and say, Oh, Lord, break from heaven, water from a rock. I just love Egypt. I just love to pray about his miracles in Egypt. Why? Because it shows us the strength of our God. Amen. God says that this second exodus is going to be so miraculous, Pastor Butler, we won't talk about the first Egypt. Amen. It won't be, amen, the signpost when we're talking about the magnificence and the strength of our God. It won't be the source that we turn back to. It won't be a thing that we cite. It won't be that no more. After he gets us back to our land, we won't talk about that first Egyptian captivity nor the first Exodus. We will talk about this one. Amen. Amen. Anybody hear it? Amen. Amen. He tells us amen in Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me see. Let me get it right. 16. Jeremiah 16 and 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said the Lord liberty that brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. They ain't going to say that. Because something better would have happened. They're going to say, but the Lord liberty that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their own land that I gave unto their fathers. This is why we know that the 1947-48 recapture of Israel by the astronauts was not the second exodus. Why yeah. oh, you can say that, Pastor? Because we're still talking about the first Egypt and the first exodus. Yeah. We're not going there and say that this was better than the split sea. That the Balfour Declaration was somehow better than Moses going and throwing his rod down in front of Pharaoh. That somehow the United Nations Declaration in November, amen, of 1947 was somehow better, huh? Than God reigning manna from heaven? We still talk about the first angel. Good. So we know the second exodus has not occurred just yet. But I got news for you. It's coming. Amen. Here we go, here we go. Listen, I gotta answer a couple of questions before we get to verse six. Really one question. While I'm studying, I'm asking, I'm saying, Lord, will all of us make it? Will every single Hebrew come along? When you choose to make this miraculous split, drying up rivers and seas, God, will it be everybody? Lord, huh? God showed me, God said, uh-uh. Uh -uh. You see, because they got some of us who are part of us, but not really for us. Come on, come on. Can I keep it real? Yeah. Right? Amen. They got some of us, amen, that don't even love us. That's the work that they did on us, man. As Hebrews, we hate one another. We distrust one another. Can't do business with one another. Jealous of one another. Pull down like crabs in a bucket. One another. And when we have to choose between us and another race, we choose them over one another. I don't admit it, man. I don't look face to face with it. As they laugh at the spiritual revelation and all of the evidence that they cannot come with one piece of information to confuse it. They just say it's laughable because they can't see their own color. Never meeting 
something in the eyes of God. You see? And we get on white folk and we say, oh, they the worst. No, they're not the worst. They're not the worst. The worst is our own kind that hate one another. That's the worst. That's the worst. Do you know some of the most fierce opposition to this truth about us being Hebrews? You know where it come from? Yeah. Come from our own, man. Our own who set a value system in their own hearts. That the most European they can talk and look like and act like, the more European they can be is the more valuable they are in their own eyes. Come on, come on. And so when you catch them, man, they, I'm talking about they put, they pouring on the sauce. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Look like coons have just come off the ship. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Had like a sponge like mine. Like, oh yeah. We're not getting like that, though. <laughs> but you got a flawed value system. You know? You think the more black you are, the more Hebrew you are, the less you are. The more natural your hair is, the less you are. The brown that your complexion is, the less you are. Let me tell you something. The devil is a liar. Yeah. 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 Liar tonight. I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. Your skin is a blessing. You're black and you're beautiful. Latino in us, we claim it everything but what's, in the, what, 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 what's really us. A man of Tiger Woods. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, well, you're black, bro. Tiger, you listen, I'm just keeping it real. I still claim you people. I'm just saying you gotta start claiming us. Let's get back, let's get back, let's get back. <laughs> Will all of us make it? No. There's going to be some left behind. You see, God is going, God is going to spiritually inspect us after he gathers us. He's going to spiritually inspect us. It's not pastors out you got to worry about. It's not like deacons or ministers in here. You can fool any of us. But God knows who you will. And in Ezekiel 20 and 37, God said this, like the shepherd, right? Look what he said. Look what he said, Shirley. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. Right? Now, for some reason, I just see my mama. <laughs> After I've done something bad. And she's standing by the door and she said, pass. So she said, she acted like she ain't gonna hit me when you're not bad. She, she said, pass. And you know how you do me like, look. That's how you learn how to do. I'm just down to When I catch the ball in the backfield, I'm thinking about mom. I'm trying to. That's where my spin move come from. Listen to me. I'm saying, pass. Right. Well, after God gathered us, and after he about to bring us in the land, God go see pass. Pass under the rod. Come on. Not rod and not stab The shepherd has a rod. And he would make his sheep pass before him. To inspect his sheep. To make sure every single one of them was his. That no other sheep can in. You see, pass. Pass a little rod. Commentators say, close inspection. Were you down? Were you with it? Or did you love Egypt? Huh? 
Je love you. Je vois you like that. Oh, boy, you like that. Right. Right. As. As I'm going to ride. In verse 38, look what he said. And I will purge. Yeah, the wicked one trying to do a purge. God got a purge too. <laughs> when you pass up that route and you're not for him. He said, I will purge out from among you the rebels. Those who don't listen to authority first in heaven. Secondly, family. Thirdly, Ecclesiastes, the church. Fourthly, even on the job, the rebels. You can't listen to nobody ahead of you, above you. You just rebel. God said, you can't come. <coughs> How you going to come? How you going to come? You don't listen to what nobody say. But not only the rebels. Listen, he going to pass him pass under the rock and he's looking for somebody else. The transgressors. The lawbreakers. For sin is the transgression of the law. Those that play like they down with God, but still got one foot in the world. Still got the woman on the side, the man and the woman on the side, on the down. Still doing this and doing that. Listen, you're going to have to choose, Hebrew. You're going to have to choose. That sin is what got us in trouble with God in the first place. You think God going to put up with that right now? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Don't be a rebel. Mm -hmm. Don't be a practical, habitual transgressor of God's commandments. <clears throat> you see? Mm -hmm. Close inspection. Verse 6 is the last one. Pastor, it's the longest six verses I ever said. They need to come on Sunday, baby. We love the word. We love the word. We love the word. We love the word. It's not me. It's just how rich and how, oh, God, packed with power those six verses were. Huh? And the Lord thy God. Talk about the, the second exodus. He's gathered us, brought us home. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed. To love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. God is talking about it here and he's alluding to it. Amen. He even alluded to it in our last scripture. Hallelujah. That we covered here. He, he's talked about the bond of the covenant. He's talking about the new covenant. Huh? The new covenant. And he's saying essential to our regathering and I will come in forth out of the land of our captivity is us Getting from out the old covenant and coming into the new covenant in Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. You see, the only way that God, hallelujah, can circumcise your heart, eh God, is to take away that stony heart and to give you a new heart. And a new heart is given at the new birth. Anybody hear me? Yeah. When you accept Christ. Yes. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. And that's what Jeremiah and Ezekiel says about the new covenant. He says a new covenant, what I make with the house of Israel. Not like the covenant I made with their fathers when they were in the wilderness, which they break. But no, I'm going to make a new covenant. And I'm going to write my law upon the pages of their heart. Amen. And I'm going to put my spirit within them. And I will cause them to walk in my commandments. I'm going to cause them to do it. I'm going to cause them. That's the new covenant. That's the new birth. That's what Jesus was talking about with Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Nicodemus, you must be born again. Listen to me now. That's the new heart. Right? He says, listen, 
in the heart of your seed. If you're here tonight, yes, you are Israel. If you're here tonight, yes, you are Hebrew. If you're here tonight, yes, you are Judah. But don't you know if you accept, if you don't accept Christ Jesus, you can go to hell as Judah. You will be in hell as a You don't remember what Jesus told the Pharisees and the Sadducees? He said, what a wonderful thing. That in the land to come in paradise and eternity, they're going to be Gentiles, strangers, sitting with David and with Abraham, while the children of the kingdom don't come in. Don't think for one second because you're Hebrew that you don't need the cross of Calvary. Say this and I'm done. Recognize we all sin us. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Secondly, the wages of our sin is death. Right? The soul that sins must die. Thirdly, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And the only qualification to be forgiven, the only thing you need to do to close this peace deal between you and God is to believe with God with all. Believe in God and His Son Jesus Christ with all your heart. It's as easy as saints as ABC. It's as easy. We admit we sinners. We believe in Jesus, His death, burial, and resurrection. We open our mouth and we confess Him as our Lord and Savior. Listen to me. We're going to pray here in a second. And we're going to pray what's called the sinner's prayer. I know it's late. I know you're tired. I know you've been in traffic. But I want to give you an opportunity to come and pray with me at this moment. Alright? Alright? Because this is the most important information tonight. Huh? And God loved you so much. And He sent us a Savior. Our Messiah. From our own tribe. Jesus the Christ. Yahshua the Messiah. Right? So we're going to have a little altar call right quick. We're going to call for those that want to make sure they're saved. But secondly, if you're here, you're a Hebrew, or you're a Christian, and you believe the word, you want to do something, be a part of something. Great. Won't say like the old hymn, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, do it without me. I might be young, Lord, but I heard that every now and then you use a Samuel, use a David in the valley against the Goliath. I might be old. Pastor, flower of my age, but I've heard that you could take even a Moses and use him at age to transform a nation. This altar call is going to be for you. We're going to pray for anointing tonight. We're going to pray for transference tonight. Listen, even the best soldiers in the army don't live forever. We saw it. Pastor the dog that just this week. But the way God kingdom work is when one falls, he raises another right back in this place. Who is that gonna be? Is he in here tonight? Is she in here tonight? God says God looks out in heaven and earth to see who he could send. He says, who will go for us? That's what the Father says. That's what the Son says. That's what the Spirit says. Who will go for us? You think I'm here because I, I, I don't have nothing to do at home? You think I'm here because, hallelujah, I don't have a wife and kids to embrace? This is dangerous stuff that I'm doing. Yes. The last thing the devil wants is the people awaken. Yes. Um, yes. But I'm here because I will not sit on the bench while my God is 
and ask the Lord, Lord, Lord anoint, me anoint me for the position. Just grab hands wherever you are. Right? Grab hands wherever you are. I'm going to put my hands, amen, on this young lady right here. You are connecting. The power of God flows like electricity. The woman didn't even touch Jesus. She touched something that was touching And he said, virtue came out of me. Dunamis power, anointing came out. And it flowed through something that was touching Jesus. Lord, I put my hand on you right now. Send your power from your throne, through my body, through my hands, and everybody I'm touching, let the power flow through me. Let it be on my clothes, in my hair. Let the power flow. Anoint me, Lord. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray anointing will flow through everybody, every person in this place. Like Christmas lights. Clogged up. Power. Power. Shine. Shine. Anointing. anointing. We pray, God, that the anointing would destroy the yokes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, give God the Lord. The awakening is happening now, and your city could be next. Pastor Omar is interested in coming to your city. Please connect with the ministry by sending us an email. We're looking to connect, organize, and establish a base in cities around the United States and the world. 
If we have enough interest from laymen and leaders, your city or country could be the next stop on the School of the Hebrews tour. Be a part of this great awakening by emailing us at prrelations at extm.org. That's prrelations at extm.org. Shalom.